presentation of this program is made possible by a grant from General Foods Corporation, by public television stations, and by grants from the Ford Foundation and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Nebraska, send us a game called Blubbity Blub, and here's how to play. One person is it, and he says either blub or blubbity blub blub to another person. If he says blub, the person shouldn't say anything. If he says blubbity blub blub blub, the other person must answer blub before the person who is it finishes saying blubbity blub blub blub. Anyway, it's fun. Blub blub. What? Blub. Blubbity blub blub blub. blub. Daddy, come on, man. Who else has to? Billy, 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 Oh, 
Here's a doodle sent it by Denise Frazier of Stoughton, Massachusetts. Can you guess what this is? What is it? It's a plucked daisy. Julie Grote of Winona, Minnesota sent us the recipe for crunchy devil sandwich. What you need is brown bread, cream cheese, devil tam, crunched peanuts, and apple jelly. Take about two spoonfuls of devil tam and two spoonfuls of cream cheese. Mix that together. Then add some crunched peanuts. Take some slices of brown bread, I already sliced mine, and spread one with apple jelly. And one with your mixture. And put it together. And there's your crunchy devil sandwich. Here's a doodle sent in by Christine Williams of Rosslyn, Mass. Can you guess what this is? What is it? It's a cat blowing up a balloon. Here's a story sent in by Meg Henley of Bella Rose, New York. Why snails carry their shells? Once upon a time, there was a snail named George. Every day he walked five miles to work and five miles back. He thought and thought of a way to get to work without having to walk five miles back and forth. I could take a bus, but no, there are no buses in the forest. I better ask Sam the snake. Knock, knock. Sam came to the door. Sam, do you know how I can get to work from my house without walking five miles there and back? I have no idea, said Sam. Ask Oli the owl. But Oli the owl couldn't help either. Better ask Eddie the elf, suggests Oli. Knock, knock. Eddie came out. Do you know how I can get from my house to work without walking five miles there and back? Ask George. Why, you don't have to walk. You have a strong back, don't you? Yes, said George. Well, then you can carry your shell on your back. Then you'll never leave your house. Gee, said George. I never thought of that. Bye, and thanks a lot. And now all snails carry their shells on their backs and never leave their home. The end. book written, illustrated, and even printed by Catherine Ann Swigert. John and the Rabbits, a story by Catherine Ann Swigert. The Attic Press, Walden, Massachusetts, 1972. Once upon a time, there was a boy. His name was John. He lived on a farm with his parents in the edge of a big forest. John had no brothers or sisters, and he was very lonely. One day, he decided to go into the forest to see if he, he, he could catch a pet. So after he finished his chores, he set up. Writing sort of runs in my family. Both my mother and father write, and I just started writing ideas and stories too, instead of just thinking them. After I'd written John and the Rabbits, I decided to print the story and make it into a book. We have a printing press in our attic, and that's where I did it. 
You have to pick the letters one by one, and every word has to be spaced just right, so it will look centered on the page you're going to print. You can't be tired or in a bad mood when you're working at the press. It's slow work and you really have to be patient. Printing the book took about 20 times as long as it did to write it, but it's nice to see a story you wrote yourself as a real book. When I started printing, I was glad I hadn't written a very long story, because each page had to be printed one at a time. Now was the time. He jumped out from behind the tree. He was about to catch the rabbit when he stumbled over a root and banged his head on a rock and became unconscious. It was a few hours later when he woke up. He looked around him in astonishment. He was no longer in the middle of the woods. The story is almost like a dream that John had, or maybe I had. He goes into the woods to try to catch a rabbit for a pet, but he ends up being taken care of by a rabbit family in their underground den. The ideas for the illustrations came pretty much from the story. I cut them on linoleum blocks, which fit right into the press for printing. page of the press is the hardest thing for me. You really have to put all your strength into it. I'm getting strong enough now that I can get a pretty even impression on the page. Sometimes the page turns out a little crooked, so it's a good idea to check and see what you've gotten. I really like the way the book turned out. It sort of makes the story special, being a book. So I guess it was worth the work. I'm not so sure I want to put everything I write. Maybe just the special things I want to last for a while. When lunchtime came, John went back to Mother Rabbit's hole and had lunch and started for home. Mother Rabbit called, is it a soften? I will, called John. He was halfway home when he remembered his pet. I won't need a pet now, he thought, because I have Mother Rabbit and her children. When he got home, he asked his mother, guess where I've been? His mother said, I can't imagine where. So John told her all of his adventures, but she only smiled and said, You have a wonderful imagination. John laughed. He knew it was true. The end. He died. Did you like the story, huh? Here's a doodle sent in by Chris Sullivan of South Boston, Mass. Can you guess what it is? Butterfly jumping rope. It's time to roll up the barrel. Here's an idea for the barrel sent in by the Lynn Golden of Chicago, Illinois. You will need a rubber ball to do this stunt. First, lie down on the floor and put your hands behind your back. Now, have someone place the ball between your feet. Now with your feet, try to drop the ball into your hands. Once you have done this, try to get up on your feet while you're still holding the ball in, hands behind your back. Good luck. And you find out what's inside today. Okay, I'm going to put the 
Put these feet down the ground. No, no, no. 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 Here's how you should put these feet down the ground. No, no, no. Especially lifts her up, right? And then drop it in your hands. Yeah. No, no, no. Try to stand up. Try to stand up with the ball behind. Stand up. Put your feet down. Put your feet down. She did it. Stand up. Put your feet down. 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 Put
Well, after you had catched all the fish that you need, you first look for good light gray clay. You gotta be careful when you're digging the clay with a knife. You gotta have it pointed down and out so you don't hurt someone. Then just get a pretty big bucket full of it. If you had a long shirt, then you'd use that to put the clay in. After you dig the clay up, it's going to be pretty hard, so you're going to have to get water on it and squish it around with your hands or use a rock to pound it down. There's some grass. Yeah. Should be enough. And once it's all smooth, it'll be kind of a little watery, so you need to add some grass to it. You start a pretty good fire. You wait a while until it burns down so it's mostly just hot coals. Then you move it over a little. And then you take the fish and the clay and you move them where the fire was in the hot ground. Then you move the fire back with some sticks back on top of it. And then you just wait around 15 to 20 minutes. After you have all the coals brushed off the fish, you should take a stick and you poke the clay and see if, if it's hard, like rocks sort of, then you know it's done. And then you push, push them aside onto cool ground. So when you try to cut it open, you'll burn yourself. After it's cooled off, you can sometimes see where the outline of the fish is. And then you cut around it and then you take the top off. Hope this fish comes out okay. Hope it tastes good too. You can have the first bite. Okay. It's really fun to stay out alone, like with a friend or a brother or something, and do it all yourself, like living out in the wild, sort of like a caveman. And doing the things yourself. Yeah. And then see what you come up with. sent in by Lynn Brown of Tacoma, Washington. Can you guess what this is? What is it? It's a frog who swallowed a brick hole. Zoom 
after this important message. Hi, my friends. Subby lovers. Lovers of his Evan. Abba Bubby Dabba Bubby Lobbock. Abba Scub Robin Tubby Tubba Cubby Tubba Babba Gobbis. Abba Abba Yabba Hubbos. Wabach. Sunny, I'm a kibbeeps ever to be bubba dubby ever. I'm a ubby bubba and kibbeeps yabba wabba. Love it, baby, yabba! Wabby wabba, tabba, bubby, have a puppy, gobble, wabby, wabba, wabby, have a puppy, tabba, bubby, mummy, yabba, have a puppy, tabba. Love I shall love a love a We'll Wabil make Bobby you Yabu Hap Hala P Bobby Wabil Wabil Bobby Bobby Yabu Yabu Hop Bobby Hop and Tabu Betty do likes Bobby Dabby of this program was made possible in part by a grant from General Foods Corporation and by public television stations.